Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. But then again, you already know that, don't you? Because that's why you've tuned in. Today I'm joined by Leon. He's making a return for his third appearance yeah. after that disastrous one the other day. <laughs> how are you doing, Liam? I'm um, not bad, to be honest with you. I've got my laptop this time, so hopefully it shouldn't cut out. Um, but yeah. You've got a bit of a, a Nottingham twang to your accent. I thought you lived in West Yorkshire. Oh, no. My dad's from Nottingham. Uh, that's probably where I get it from, but uh, Derby me, unfortunately. <laughs> you support? But then? And City, innit? Yeah, City. Mm. Yeah, Nottingham fans don't like Derby fans, do they? No, my dad's a Forest fan, living in Derby. So. <laughs> well, I bet he gets some stick, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> right then, what we got on agenda for today then? What you want me to uh, help you through this? Right then, uh, what did you think about the show last night? <clears throat> BT Sport, the Bricktop show. Well, um, <laughs> it was, um, it, there was a couple of good fights on there. Um, the first one I got onto was the Turner v uh, Des Newton. I uh, thought Turner was controlling the fight, and Newton he, he didn't look like he was in it at all. He wasn't throwing any punches. I think I, count, I counted in, I think it was the fourth round. Yeah, I counted in the fourth round how many punches he threw. He threw 15 punches. <laughs> and, oh, and, um, oh, yeah. Pardon? No, I'm trying to help you along here. Well, what, 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 so Turner beat who? I beat Des Newton. Right, so it's a good win for yeah. two. We're three and out, Turner, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I think he won all six rounds, in my opinion. Right. Um, New, Newton took some shots. I don't think it looked like much of a competition, though, to be honest. Hopefully, Turner gets a bit more of a competition next time. Uh, I'd like to see him in against Sean McComb. He's 11 and knowing he's 71st in the world, and I think that would be a good test for him. Mm. All right then. Moving on then. The next one up, he was three and zero, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, Chapman versus Agyarko. What did you think to that fight, Leon? Uh, for Agyarko looked the better fighter. Um, Chapman only stopped by Brad Paul for Southern Area title. Uh, coming into the second round, uh, I gave it to Agyarko, but Chapman was throwing some nice shots. Uh, he wasn't hitting the target with his first punch, and it was costing him. Yeah. Um. He was. He, he just kept. He's trying to throw a left hook, and it just. It didn't look like it was working out for him. It. It. It just wasn't working. I said the third round went to a Yarko. He was throwing and landing the better shots all the way through the fight. Uh. The fourth round, Chapman started to come into it. Uh. But a Yarko redeemed himself with uh some nice sharp punches in the fifth. Uh. Both fighters had two nice flurry of punches in the fifth. But uh, I think Agyarko was over more, overall more active and I think it was a good stoppage by the ref. All right, then. So that's two fights. What about the next one up? Who was that? Uh, Fury Krievsky. He was free and old Fury as well, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, I, Let me just stop you there, right. Fury's back up for the first two guys. They were fighting people with how many wins? Seven or eight? Yeah, yeah. Right, and how many wins has the guy who Fury's got fighting? Zero wins. And this is the second. 11 losses. And 11 losses. He's now got 12, hasn't he? So, mm -hmm. has he been knocked out 12 times? Uh, I think he was knocked out five times. Five times. Right. And the other... So, he's had two guys, Fury, out of these four wins, and they've not even had any wins. No. Now... How many wins altogether have Fury's opponents got uh, added up? I think 12 wins. Yeah. Hold on, let me just check box, right? Do a 12 bit of quick math. 65 and something else in it. Is it five? Yeah, 12, 165 losses and five draws. Right. But... People are going to give Tommy Fury an hard time over that. Mm. I'm going to come out and defend Tommy Fury here because he's 21-year-old. He's hardly had any amateur fights. I think he had a couple, but I'm not sure. 
And if you go and compare his record with other people who went on to do well in boxing, they would probably have a similar yeah. uh, record, be fighting similar guys. Go and look at uh, Conor Ben and people like that. Go and look at their first four fights. And that probably averages out something like three and 41 or something. And yeah. something like that, doesn't it? And one, 341 mm. and one for the first four. It's not brilliant, but he's got to step it up now, hasn't he? Mm. Yeah, I, I said um, when I was watching, I was making notes and I thought, it, it it might just be a record builder, but to have someone three and zero against someone no and eleven, I thought it was just a bit excessive. Yeah. Uh, but Tommy Fury seems like a nice guy, and all the best to him. Well, this is how I look at it. They're not going to put Tommy Fury near any danger, not when he's got all them followers on social media and mm. so is his, his partner that uh, Polly is it or whatever I don't watch any of them programs whatever she's called Molly or something if they've got big followings they're going to want them people to sit and watch aren't they on telly mm. that's what happens because he's not going to be selling any tickets at the moment is he because there's no. not tickets to be sold so what they're going to do they're going to look to bring him on but slower than they would anybody else. Because if you look at the two kids that were next to him on the card, they were free and I was well like Tommy, weren't they? Mm. But they were in harder fights with men that have had more fights and they've had wins, haven't they? Yeah. But yeah. more wins Tommy's had them opponents for, for them other two. So there's a difference between Tommy Fury, he's got a profile. The other two kids have, a, have not got a profile. You yeah. see where I'm coming from? Which brings me to yeah. something we're going to talk later on about profile. Uh, like Eggington. Compare his profile with Dave, Al Dave Allen's. Dave Allen's not yeah. won a belt. He's still at matchroom. Eggington's been let go. He's with McKennessy now. Eggington's a British Commonwealth and European champion. And he's 24 yeah. year old. Four year younger than Dave Allen, but he's been let go, hasn't he? Yeah. Whereas Dave Allen... Only belt he's got it on is a snake belt to hold his jeans up. See where I'm coming from? <laughs> but he's got a profile, hasn't he? A bit like Tommy Fury. Tommy Tommy Fury, I don't want to be a hater, and people will say, Parker, you're a hater. Tommy Fury does not win a British title. Doesn't win it. Don't mean to say he can't try. He doesn't win a British title. Would he beat Lyndon Arthur? Ah. Uh... I don't know. I ain't got a clue. Well, I don't think he beats Lyndon Arthur. I don't think he's at that level. Does it? Would he beat Anthony? Would he beat Charlie Duffield? Yeah, yeah. Tommy Fury beats Charlie Duffield. Are you on drugs, you? I reckon you know he would. Charlie Duffield is. He's trained by Mark Tibbs. I think he's nine and one, is he, or something like that? Are you telling me Tommy Fury beats Charlie Duffield? Mark Tibbs, yeah. get in touch with Frank Warren and make Charlie Duffield against Tommy Fury. They're not going to put Chomp Tommy Fury near, near uh, Charlie Duffield. I think that was your casual moment for today, wasn't it, Leon? <laughs> no, I was just thinking he's 4-0. Oh, no. He needs a test. Oh, well, listen, listen, mate. You can look at them statistics all you want. Every opponent that he's fought has been ranked over 1,000, haven't they? Am I right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, true. Yeah. So think before you jump in. All right. Mm. I'm not going to have, I'm not going to tell you off, but they're not going <laughs> to not going to put Tommy Fury near Charlie Duffield. You're going to see him fighting a lot more people whose names you can't pronounce. For example, the four people he's fought, can you pronounce the names? Um, let me just have a look on box rec. No, <laughs> a, a simple answer. <laughs> yes or no. Tommy Fury as well. Gennad Gennadij Krajewski, Przemyslaw uh, Binyenda, Callum Hyde, and Jeb Jensen, Jenges, and Jeff Jeffs. What's the matter with your, your audio? My audio? Every you speak, it's making a funny noise. Yeah, same for you as well. It's like, distorted a little bit that's better 
Right, so you can't pronounce yeah. the names, yeah? Uh, give it a good go. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to see Tommy Fury in with anybody from Britain? Not at the minute, no, but like we say, he's, 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 he's 21, isn't he? Yeah. He's got plenty of time under his boot, so we'll just see where he goes. I think we should judge Tommy, Tommy Fury when he's had 10 fights. Yeah, yeah. He got it spot on. He's got enough to step it up a bit, but not too much. He's got to be brought on correctly, hasn't he, so we can see if he's any good. Mm. Because I put myself in with that guy that Tommy Fury beat last night. We are one month. Yeah, ago, that... <laughs> and I could knock him out. Probably, mm. probably as quick. Do you know what I mean? But he's got to get used to the atmosphere, fighting in the ring, all the lights, all the attention. He ain't just about gelling your hair and looking pretty because no. there's going to come a time when Tommy's in that ring and somebody's hitting him back. Now, everybody's got a plan aren't they, until they get hit. All right. Mm. Moving on then, main event. What did you think to that? I thought they were both very tough guys. Personally, I thought that Bentley won the first one and I just expected him to meet Shorey of his win this time around and he exceeded expectations. Yeah. I think he can he controlled the whole fight, but Hefron was fighting back well given like the injury. Was it his left eye? Yeah. Yeah, in the second round. It was disappointing it had to finish so soon because it was a really tough and com competitive fight. Uh, it was a well-deserved win by Bentley. It was a good fight. Where do you think Bentley will go from here and what do you think Kid Giant Dynamite will do next? I think he'd, uh, I think Bentley wins... I think he wins a European title. I think he's good enough. He's a mm. boxer puncher. Efron's a puncher. A <coughs> yeah, yeah. I'd like to see him in with Liam Williams down the line, but I think Liam Williams is probably probably two year ahead of him now. I think. I like to see mm. him do what Carl Froch did, and people are going to say, "Porky, you're always talking about Carl Froch." Well, Carl Froch <laughs> won a Lonsdale belt outright. He also had probably seven or eight wins with Commonwealth. Why don't mm. Bentley stick with his British title, win it outright and learn his craft? And he probably will with Frank Warren. But if you noticed all the fighters with Eddie Hills, what they do, that's Eddie Hills 4-0, and oh, super amateur <laughs> star, three by the way of. All the <laughs> fighters, they win a British, then they're thrust into a... He lobbies for them to get a ranking and then they're thrown under a bus for money. I want yeah. to see Bentley brought on, learn his craft at British level, and then mm. move, move up to, to the to the right fights. Mm. And Frank Warren's a better boxing man than Eddie Hills. So I agree. Hopefully, I'd like to see him fight Liam Williams in a couple of years. Mm. Yeah. So moving on to the uh, the card tonight, we've got. Uh, Obviously, got the three world title women's fights. We've got Katie Taylor versus Miriam Gutierrez for WBA, WBC, IBF, and WBA. Um, I think that Taylor is she's ranked first in the world, isn't she? On box, right? Yeah. Um, I think Gutierrez is ranked 11th with a 13 and no record. Um, someone's always got to go, and I, to be honest, I think Katie Taylor's going to do it. Personally, yeah, well, nobody's going to get a decision against Katie Taylor on points, are they? No, that's why she might never get beat in England because they're only two minute rounds and she's got a powerful promoter and, and mm. as a behind her. So, and these women that are coming in, that half of them are fanboys or fangirls, are just so humble to be there. Yeah, when it's like that and they've got nobody backing them behind them, putting a bit of pressure on behind the scenes. When it comes down to a points victory, they're not going to get the nod, are they? Do you know what I mean? Who else yeah. is fighting? Uh, you got Harper versus Standers. Um, Harper's obviously got a uh, ten wins, five by way of, but drew against Jonas for the WBC and IBO. Uh, that was a tough and close fight. Harper cut Jonas above her eye in the third or fourth round, was it? Who did you think won that fight? <sighs> I'm 
I thought it was. I thought it was right decision as a draw, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. That's your opinion. You're entitled to it. Yeah. I thought Jonas won by two rounds, but I think Terry Harper wins tonight. And good luck to her. I don't know. I don't know. She, um, looking at a recent interview, she's not sounding very confident at all. Uh, she's like sounding very anxious about the fight. Do well, you know why that is? Mind games. No, I'll tell you why that is. Because she got it in her last fight and she'd never been it. She'd never been yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. All her own way. Yeah, she, got it. Mm. she got it in her last fight. I mean, we're talking about a world champion defending a belt and it's first time she's been it. I don't this is where we're at with women's boxing. You see where I'm coming from? Mm, yeah. I mean, uh, Thanders, her last fight was against Daniela Ramos for the interim WBC. Uh, she won that fight, obviously. And I just think, I just hope that Harper has the confidence to win this fight after, I like to say, being hit. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, and who else is on? There's another one. Uh, Ball, Ball versus Guanini. Rachel Ball. Yeah. I think uh, they're both. I think Rachel Ball wins that and then she that's the world title, isn't it? Um yeah, it is. Or I can't remember what it's for. Let me just check. Do, 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 do. Come on. It's like pulling fucking teeth, this. You should have it on your screen. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's because I have to go off my um, my notes to go on to BoxRec. It's for the interim world WBC. Uh, and Guanini actually failed to make weight. Right, so so basically only Ball can win the belt now then, yeah? Yeah. Right, and what, what's it for? WBC? Yeah. The full WBC? Uh, interim. Interim. Right. Yeah, so it's for interim, so right, it's for interim. I thought I heard it for the full one, so it's for interim. If Ball wins it, she's basically mandatory for champion, isn't she? She'll probably fight yeah. the champion, and then Courtney and Earl will fight, they'll try and build that up, won't they? Yeah, yeah, it's like Eddie Hills has been let loose in a sweet shop, isn't it? <laughs> Amanda saved with female boxing soon, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Who else is on the show? Um, I think there's three male fights as well, but I don't think they're for any world titles or anything. No. Um, but then obviously you've got um Aaron's show with Brooke and Crawford. Right. So what did you say? Who, who did you say else is on Eddie's show after them fights? Uh there's three male fighters, but uh I can't I can't I couldn't find who they were anywhere. I, yeah, I was looking it up last night and it was just like showing up with the important fights and I was like, what? Well, fuck, fuck, fuck Eddie off now. I'm sick of him this week. Move on to Bob Arum, right? Bob Arum, Kelby. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about that, yeah. Oh, what a fight this is going to be tonight. This is what I'm really excited for because it's... It's a big fight. It is a big fight. It's either going to be a war or a slaughter, and I think it's going to be a war. It's going to be a war, yeah? Well, yeah. Maybe Kel Brook can hold on to the fact that Crawford's climbed the top of the, top of the mountain and he's just starting to come down slightly. Mm -hmm. That's all he can hold on to, but he's going to have to perform out of his skin He's going to have to have done the weight correctly. He's going to need a miracle to get a decision on points. We're talking about on an Al Heyman show yeah. in America, fighting away from home against a pound for pound. He's in everybody's top four, isn't he, Crawford? Yeah. Mm. All right, and he's a natural welterweight. Kel Brooks, a light middle, super welter, whatever you want to call it, fighting at a lesser weight, and he hasn't had a win for a decent win at welterweight in our long since Sean Porter, has he? Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I'd say so. Right. So he's up against it. He hasn't got the trainer that he's had nearly all his career. Flex Wheeler, Dominic Ingle. Uh, so he's got this new trainer as well. So I think he's up against it. And I think with all that stacked against him and time's knocking on for him now with his age and things like that, I think Kelbrook gets beat tonight, but I hope he doesn't. But I think he gets beat tonight. And I think it's a shame. And um, I'm going to agree with what other people have said, that it's a cash out. But he's going to mm. prove us all wrong. But when have you ever seen somebody in his position going into a fight like this where everything's stacked against them that said, uh, I'm going to win? Uh, sorry, that said they're not going to get beat. Of course they're going to say it, they're going to win, they're going to knock him out. Mm. His best camp ever, stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. I'm eating kangaroo meat. They're going to say all that, <laughs> aren't they? Or in Kel's case, I'm eating steak. My is me steak. Brownie. I'm going to knock him out with a chocolate brownie. <laughs> Good luck to oh, Kel. Me. Oh, a lot yeah. of the problems that Kel Brooks had in his career have all been Kel Brooks' own doing. Not everybody yeah. else. It's all right playing blame game. But... <clears throat> We wish him well. We wish him well. And like I oh, said, yeah, yeah. knock Crawford out. Come back and say, fuck you, Eddie, and fuck you, Porky. I'm a champion again. <laughs> and fuck the guy. I'm now with Premier Sports. I'm the face of uh, Premier Sports Boxing. There's nothing I'd like better than that. And I will be <laughs> up tonight with my four bottles of black sheep, sat here drinking it, watching it, and I will be looking forward to it. Oh, it's going to be a good fight. Yeah, it is. Um, and after that, you've got uh, Joshua uh, Joshua Franco versus Andrew Molney for the WBA regular super flyweight title. Yeah. And that's on tonight as well. Um, I don't really, I don't really know what to say about that fight. I think it will be interesting, but. Yeah, I, I like I say, I don't know. I don't know. Let me see if I can throw you the bone here because I think we're struggling a little bit with your material, kid. Uh, what? So basically, there's no other Brits on that card, then, is there? Bob Arams, no? Uh, no. Oh, fuck other than we'll, Kel, we'll have a Kel Kel direction. Right, what about the China woman that Eddie Earns signed? Ong Chong Pong, or whatever her name is. I, I can't even pronounce it. Now, he signed a China woman, hasn't he? I'm not sure. I've not heard about that. Now, I want to talk about that. The reason I think he's signed her is because he's going to put Joshua. He's looking to put Joshua in, in with the big China man that he beat in in, Af, in, 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 Olympia, in Olympics, right? Yeah. Now, if Joshua fights the big China man who he beat in Olympics, they've got intense beef, haven't they? It, it, it's really yeah. or revenge, all that kind of crap. Raw beef and all this crap. Laughing luncheon meat, sexy salmon, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> put it on in China, they're going to have to have this woman on undercard. So then they've got two Chinese people, a female Chinese woman and a male Chinese man fighting yeah. against two Brits. They'll put a Brit in with her. With her, I don't know, Katie Tate, Kayla, or whoever they want to put in. Terry Harper could make super feather. Mm. Terry Harper could end up fighting in China, which is not bad to say she's from Denneby. So Joshua against that Zilling or whatever he's calling, Zhang. And, and, um, and I'm on his box right woman, now. Woman, whatever. We'll call her Miss Chu Me, shall we? You know, like that woman in James Bond. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Swimming pool. <laughs> she says, chew me. So, chew me from uh, China against Terry Harper, Big Dosafemi against that Zong or whatever he's called. That's two fights he'll look to do. And it'll be another year without fighting Fury, won't it? Eddie's yeah. only preparing to get that out of the way next year and build. Uh, relations with China people and they're already well in there over there because snooker's a massive 
massive, isn't it? It gets like a billion views, doesn't it, mm. the China Open? So yeah. look for Eddie to be doing something in China next year with Big Dos uh, Right. He'll be looking to build people up who's got a great story. I mean, they could, could you imagine, Eddie? Terry Harper worked in a fish and chip shop. Then they'll create this story about this Chu Me. Well, she worked in a, in a, in a Chinese in a, in a Chinese <laughs> way. Could you imagine it? <laughs> Could you imagine that? Uh, it'd be crazy. Yeah, I'll tell you something else I want to talk about as well. Um, I want to talk about Joe Gallagher having to apologise for, for that the word ra he used race and he meant to say equality. He's had to come out groveling like a snivelling little whatever that he is. Well, he should have just apologised, but you don't keep, have to keep going on about it, Joe, and groveling because you're embarrassing yourself. Now, Joe's come out and he's had to grovel, but Anthony Joshua tells Eddie, Eddie Chambers in a, in a text message that He's a disgrace to the black superior race, right? And nothing is said about it. They say his phone got hacked. Yeah. Nothing is said about it. No apology whatsoever. It, forward X amount of months, he's, he's, he's at that Black Lives Matter march thing, and he's saying that people shouldn't buy anything out of white shops and all that. Is he? Or only buy from black shops or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. And then now... Um, him out with Google advert, aren't they saying buy from everybody? Mm. But we don't see any apologies, any apologies from Big Dos Femi. It works both ways, so I kind of feel sorry for Joe Gallagher having to come out and mm. grovel. Do you know what I mean? But now they're talking yeah. about Callum Smith against Canelo. Well, this is how I look at that. I'll believe that when I see it this year if that happens. If it happens, fair enough, but it, uh, it hasn't happened yet, has it? No. And then um, put Canelo on in December and we're November now, a month to promote it. I don't think so, but I could be wrong, but I doubt it. Um you know the uh the thing that Joshua said about the uh only black businesses. Yeah. Uh, apparently that speech he, he said he come out and said that speech wasn't made by him. Well if that speech wasn't even have read eh? why read it out then? Exactly. Why, why, you would surely have read it before you've gone up on stage and read it out. Of course he has read it. They're just trying to play PR game, aren't they? Mm. The, the, yeah. the chameleons, all of them, mate. They, they are chameleons, and that's just how it's <laughs> Chameleons, mate. <laughs> They're chameleons, right. The cunning of the foxes. That's what they're like. You know, like Carlo Gambino, who used to be Ed at Crack Gambino's in the 70s and 60s. Yeah. They were cunning like a fox. And let me tell you this. That's what them lot are. They're cunning like foxes. Mm. The game. That's all it's called. Playing the game. They'd do anything to get out of a situation where they can't have pay-per-view buys. They would go to bed and fuck a snake. Just <laughs> Why do you think I'm joking? No. No, I know you beat us. <laughs> So, all right, then. well, listen, thanks for coming on. And we'll have yeah, no worries. Time. Keep at yep. it. Keep supporting boxing. Very well done on your research. You, you, you've, do, you've done well. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll send you the porky teddy. How's about that? Carly, if you oh, yeah. send him a porky teddy, send your address in to email. Uh, <laughs> we'll send you the porky teddy out. Uh, I'm actually going to, you know, just for a laugh. <laughs> you mean you'd actually put it up, sit it on your bed, would you, or in your bedroom? <laughs> oh, no, I'd keep it in the box as a collectible <laughs> for a new <laughs> boxing pocket. <laughs> All right, well, no worries. Well, listen, yeah. you take care, Leon, and uh, all the best to you and your family. Don't have nightmares. I, I won't have nightmares. Stop nicking my lines. Right. <laughs> I'll see you later. All right. Well, that were young Leon from Derby. I thought it were West Yorkshire, actually. It's mm. near the Yorkshire, isn't it, Derby? But, yeah, I thought his accent had a bit of a Nottingham Derbyshire twang to it. Uh, that's about it for today. I don't know if I'm doing anything later, but I am doing one tomorrow with Rico. Rico's return and Terry, his return. So there's... 
there's two gonna go up tomorrow and uh they'll be good charts they're proper hardcore charts young leon uh he's doing a lot of research and he's taking it all in and he's doing best that he can and i think that's good next generation isn't it because a lot of kids these age they're all sat in house on their ipads it's like my two kids when i get a grip of them they don't want to go out golf balling you know hanging around golf course and finding golf balls and they don't want to go conquering they don't want to go for a walk with my dog and me they don't want to play football they want to go to McDonald's and then they want to sit in the house on their iPads playing TikTok and Roblox and Keep Creek Craft, is it? And it's basically a lost generation. And I sympathize with a lot of parents out there whose kids are just sat in the house doing that. And we live in a society now where you can't let your kids out. Or you've got to keep an eye on them all the time because there's a lot of bad people out there, isn't there? But anyway, we're going off track here. Enjoyed that with Leon. I thought I'd have to give him another run uh, after the other day because uh, I don't think he felt he performed correctly. So, but if he sends his address in, I'll make sure he gets a porky. Teddy sent in the post. All right. Peace out.